Um, the Durandang these days looks a bit like this. The swamp forest is gone, but there is plenty of water, certainly in the wet season. Um, Chen had to wade up nearly to his middle to get through <laughs> the uh, swamp land to reach uh, this, this site here. In the middle of the swamps is known as Pula Mojopite or Mojopite Island. And we excavated that in, what was it, 2011? I, was it 12? 2010, yes. Um, we were most fortunate in getting a generous grant from a business gentleman in, in Singapore that enabled us to uh, carry out an excavation there for a couple of weeks in cooperation with the um, National Archaeological uh, Research Institute in Jakarta. <clears throat> it's not easy working in these conditions. There's, there's just so much water about that uh, most of the site is waterlogged. But you get these uh, Batuache grave markers uh, all over the place. And as I say, there was uh, no less than a hundred of them that we identified. Then Perlak, which is just east of modern Loksamawe and ancient Samudra, uh, was a medieval Islamic coastal polity um, which was reputedly frequented by Persian traders. According to local legend, uh, people in Perlak claim that Islamization took place from Arab, Persian and Gujarati uh, influences since the late 9th century. However, uh, the only uh, evidence of is early Islamic burial there are the plain slab type proto ache which are found in a place called Kotumaligu or Palace Hill, um, which date from the 13th or 14th centuries. There's nothing uh, actually tangible evidence of any earlier um, Islamic occupation there. And this is the, the grave of um, Sultan Alaidin Said Mulana Abdul Aziz Shah, who reputedly died in 249 Hijra, which is equivalent to 864. But the, the gravestones, as I say, uh, are most unlikely to be earlier than the 13th or early 14th centuries. <clears throat> And these are uh, just the same as the ones that we find in Lamre, uh, the, the type two, as I'll mention shortly, and in uh, Samudra and in Aru. And finally, Samudra Passe, uh, which was reputedly an early important Islamic polity from the late 13th century, visited by Marco Polo and conquered by Aceh in 1524. Uh, there is a grave marker dedicated to Malaku Saleh, uh, which um, bears a date equivalent to 1292. Now, uh, this is all well and fine, but uh, the grave marker itself is a replacement uh, Nissan, which cannot be earlier stylistically than the early 16th century. So there is no actual um, 13th century grave marker to uh, evidence the burial of Maleku Sali in the 13th century. What is interesting though is that uh, Cheng He established a naval base at the mouth of the Passe River in the early 15th century. And uh, in 1975, I was lucky enough to be able to take a photograph uh, to provide evidence of the proto bato Ache in association with the obelisk-like grave markers, the Plang Plang, uh, in a field at, uh, at Passe. Uh, grave markers, curiously enough, tend to get moved. And what I saw back in 1975 have gone, 
from the place they were already in uh, at that time and have been moved into a, a more formal cemetery, which is extremely confusing for the archaeologist. Um, and I'm, I'm sure this is happening time and time again, that uh, a lot of these early grave markers are no longer in their original locations. Uh, this is what Passai looked like uh, 40 odd years ago. Uh, it was pretty empty, there was hardly anything there, apart from numerous uh, burial complexes. But uh, unfortunately, uh, but uh, due to modern development, the whole area has been turned into fish ponds. Now, back in 75, uh, these burial markers were found in the middle of a field. <coughs> As I say now, they've been removed and they're put into a modern cemetery. But the interesting thing to me here was that uh, these small plain slabs were found in association with these uh, obelisk-like grave markers. And um, <coughs> when we go to look at what the uh, similarities with the ones in Lamre, uh, th this association is actually quite important. So Lamre. Um, a Dutch report on Lamre from 1911 uh, notes that there were at that time two Islamic shrines and that the area was associated with a legend that mentioned uh, Rang Manyang, who was uh, a, a merchant who came back to uh, Aceh from overseas. He'd been away for years. He became, uh, came back as an extremely rich man. But <clears throat> when he found his mother <coughs> in poverty on the shore, he ignored her. So she cursed him and his ship. And he and his ship were turned into the rock, which is now off the end of the headland. <coughs> Interesting uh, story. But the headland itself is formed from uplifted uh, fossiliferous limestone. It's the sort of environment where water is extremely different, uh, difficult to find. And when we first went there, uh, back in 1996, there were traces of two or possibly three wells uh, adjacent to the bay at Lok Chut. The only other adjacent source of water was the Lubuk River, which I pointed out earlier. And so there was the track leading down from the top of the headland to the Lubuk Beach, where people living on the top of the headland could possibly have collected fresh water for use on the top. Uh, and the Kuta Lubuk, which was built later to command access to the supply of water in, in the river. <coughs> and now the various kinds of early tombstones. Coincidentally, the shape of the uh, Tamil inscription from Nasu on the, on the left of the picture here. Um, this hasn't been entirely satisfactorily dated, but the epigraphers tell us that it dates to the late 13th century, as some of the lettering is similar to a dated inscription in Chuanzhou, in South China. Uh, is very similar to one form of grave marker, of which there are a few on the right, with a similar rounded top, plain, apart from a small plinth at the bottom of the thing. Um, these I've only ever seen in Lamre. They don't appear anywhere else. And so the possibility is um, that these may date from the 13th or early 14th century. There's no way of telling absolutely because uh, pretty well everything has been disturbed and um, as I say they don't appear anywhere else. The most common 
type of early slab grave marker though is um, the type 2 which are simple slabs with a single pair of shoulders and a flat top of which there are two varieties a square cut form and a possibly later tapered form uh, which are known as charter stones. There is however uh, an inscribed example of one of these stones in a slightly bigger form from Passe, which has uh, inscriptions in Old Malay and Arabic, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but otherwise, these simple slabs uh, appear at Lamre, at Aru, in Perlak, and Samudra. The only missing harbor is uh, Fansu, which as I say is, is now drowned. But we also have um, simple slab forms with multiple two or more shoulders and a flat top, a wing form uh, with an, uh, the earliest dated example known from Passe, uh, dating from 1403 of the Common Era. Uh, plain wing forms also appear in Lamre and Kutarantang in Delhi. There's also a cap form with no inscribed or dated examples identified to date, which appear in Lamre and Kutaruntang, possibly dating from the late 13th or early 14th <coughs> century. And then we also have a combined winged and cap form. So I, I've identified uh, basically six different forms of these. In Lamre, uh, is there is one decorated example of this rounded top uh, grave marker. The decoration seems to have been taken from the interior of a Yuan period Qingpai glazed bowl. Uh, we found shards of uh, Yuan Qingpai ware with a very similar decoration on the interior. So it may be that uh, whoever carved this gravestone was actually copying a uh, a, a motif from the inside of a Chinese uh, piece of uh, stoneware. But the small plain slabs, as I say, come in two forms. The square cut form, which appears uh, in the four harbors I mentioned, and the wasted form, which uh, Daniel Perrett cause, causes uh, calls charter stones may exhibit some sort of Javanese uh, influence, but I'm not convinced about that. Um, then the the inscribed version, this comes from Passe, um, and uh, it has a date equivalent to 1380 or and or uh, 1389. And this is the earliest known inscribed version of this type of stone. <clears throat> so it, it helps to place the other ones in a, I think, a, a possibly earlier context. Then back at Lamre, we have um, a version with a rounded top and a small flat end to it. Um, What I haven't f seen anywhere else except in Lamre is a similar stone with ang an angular top, a flat top, and, and sloping sides, but uh, a variant of the, the basic theme. Um, one with multiple sh shoulders. And these, there are dozens of these things. They're just lying around all over the place in, in, in the undergrowth. Um, Another one with multiple top. And then at Kutaruntang, um, slabs, which are quite thin in fact, with a distinct wing form which seems to appear in the early 15th century. Then the capstone. Um, Again, possibly a slightly later development, um, which has been found in Kutaruntang. 
which would appear to be uh, datable to the early or mid 15th century. And uh, then the winged and cap form, which is a pretty standard Batuache type uh, from Ujumbate Cape. Uh, this one with a very basic design on, on both of the panels at the front and the back. Um, back to Kuturuntang. <coughs> um, something, a phenomenon I hadn't seen anywhere else. Uh, there are literally dozens of these very small, one might say miniature, grave markers, which are no more than about 20 centimeters high. Uh, and again, scattered all over the place, unfortunately now all being disturbed by cultivation. Um, we've mapped out uh, over a hundred locations for these things. Uh, novel use for disused grave markers. Uh, this guy was using them to prop up his house. <laughs> Um, there was just so many lying about that uh, they get misappropriated and uh, local people have found a use for them. Then at Lubuk, uh on the east uh, side of the headland at Lamre, um, this <coughs> was discovered in 1996 by an uh, Indonesian team who um, unfortunately didn't take any form of uh, parang or machete with them so they didn't really get access to the grave markers that they found there. But this was reassessed in 2009 by Gio and Kalus um, who disagreed with what the Indonesians had reported um, a decade and a half earlier because one of the things they thought they'd found was a, an early um, early 13th uh, century grave marker which according to the, the French scholars um, was a misreading and therefore uh, it was not uh, as early as they thought it was. But this unfortunate uh, situation is that th this hasn't been protected as some of the other cemeteries have been uh, and has been tremendously disturbed by the, these free-range cattle that go running around all over the place. Um, anyway, the, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, obelisk or plang plang grave markers are found only in a very limited number of locations. Lamre, uh, Kampong Pande in Banda Aceh itself, um, which is largely uh, subjected to the, in, the intertidal zone. Uh, Kota Alam, uh, Pango, on the banks of the Ache River. Uh, Panchu Bay, to the west of Banda Ache, and Daya, on the west coast. The other place is where, where these things appear is, is Samudra Passe. Um, the French consider these to be a local development, but uh, interestingly, uh, they appear to be strongly influenced by South Indian Buddhist and Hindu, Hindu symbolism. And the shape is, uh, to me anyway, uh, reminiscent of the shikar form of South Indian temple gateways. At the Lubuk Cemetery, uh, which was inventoried by the, the French uh, in about 2006. Uh, two of the stones have been severely damaged but still have epitaphs which could be read. Um, they are truncated stumps which bear inscriptions dating to between 771 or 791 Hijra, that is 1369 to 1467, uh, but the top uh, slender upper uh, portions are now missing. However, we have found fragments of missing top parts in the undergrowth round about the cemetery. And then uh, two lucky survivors 
which the French calls uh, KL 07 and 8. Uh, memorials dated, uh, sorry, the, these two are uh, embedded in the same base or Batu Badan. Now, one of these memorials is a century older than the other. And uh, so far, there is no explanation as to how two different uh, grave markers can appear in the same Batu Badan. Um, it could be that the site was uh, affected by one of the tsunamis back in 1394 or um, thereabouts. Uh, but the second stone uh, is dated to after 1450, so it could have been put in uh, after the second tsunami in the middle of the 15th century. But we haven't found any trace of tsunami damage uh, in and around the cemetery itself. Uh, there are uh, a variety of uh, grave markers to be found still in the cemetery. Uh, this one, which is, it has a, uh, the inscription incised into the stone, all the others are in relief, is unnamed but dated to 841 Hijra or 1438. Um, the two which I mentioned earlier, uh, both within the same Batu Badan um, are uh, from 1369 or 1389, sorry, and um, 1466, 67, which are amongst the latest uh, dated of this type. Uh, here these chaps had found fragments buried in the undergrowth uh, and the further research may yet uh, reward us with more fragments in the future. But the relief carving uh, is quite distinct uh, floral motifs and um, this particular thing intrigues me. The lower motif here looks a little bit like a buffalo's uh, horns may in fact be uh, an inverted tree ratna symbol. Um, if anybody would like to comment on this, I would appreciate it. But uh, <clears throat> this is a very strange looking um, capped stone, probably about 30 centimeters in height. Um, we have not yet uh, found uh, this particular type anywhere else except in Lamare. The two, uh, the pair of stones which are dated to 824 Hijra in situ, one is now in the museum in Banda Aceh, the other one is still standing in the field. Um, a surprise find um, of a very well preserved inscription dating to 1419 or 822 Hijra, dedicated to Malana Ismail Qadir Sadr al Islam. Um, another pair of stones, unfortunately, the date is lost, but it, it must be stylistically from the early 15th century, uh, and an inscription which mentions. The Holy Warrior, the name of the chap himself is, is unfortunately lost. But the, uh, the motifs here are uh, interesting. Here we have an en endless knot. Here again, the sort of buffalo horn-like symbol and a whole host of other uh, floral designs uh, carved, intricately carved in the top of the stone. Um, Another Nissan um, with a variety of designs on it, uh, unfortunately not yet um, deciphered. Uh, and an interesting variety, a, a hybrid slab uh, using the same sort of uh, design elements at the top, um, which has, uh, was dedicated to Nur al-Din Asar, 
who died in 839 Hijra or 1438. Now, the uh, type of stone used for these grave markers varies quite uh, considerably. Many of them are of yellowish or reddish sandstone, but uh, at Lamre we come across a, a very friable, coarse, light -like uh, white limestone, which is local, and unfortunately tends to fall apart very easily. Uh, at Kutaruntang, there appears to be uh, quite a number of the Nissan, which are uh, cut from uh, Toba Tuff, uh, which is found locally just a, a short distance inland from the site itself. But this, unfortunately, uh, displays how fragile and friable this local stone can be. And because of this, quite a number of the stones have actually just disintegrated. Other examples of the obelisk-like grave markers uh, are to be found in and around Banda Aceh uh, at sites such as Kambong Pande, uh, Kuta Alam, uh, Nasu and uh, Lok Panchu. Interestingly here you have an overlap with the Tamil inscription which also came from Nasu. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, these grave markers represent burials of a South Indian community of traders, very likely the Anjubanam Guild, whose members at this particular time, the 14th, 15th century, were predominantly Muslims. And so they were pres uh, pres present in Aceh prior to the rise of the Sultanate in, in, 15, in the fifth, late 15th century. It may be that the tsunami of 1450 had a devastating effect on the coastal communities at that time, which would have considerably weakened them and made it easy for the uh, Cham-speaking people who came into Aceh at that period uh, to easily take over uh, the area. But uh, many of the grave markers found in the above uh, mentioned locations and also those in Samudra, although undated, are generally more ornate than those found at Lamre, which suggests that they're probably later than most of the Lamre examples, and thus date from the mid to late 15th century. Here's an example in Kampong Pande, with quite an extensive uh, inscription of it. I, I don't have a translation of that, unfortunately. But again, uh, quite ornate carving in the top part of the stone. Um, and a variant of our buffalo horn symbol at that point. Uh, a very ornate example in which uh, you still get the buffalo symbol here, but we also have a, an added uh, decorative panel at the base. Um, this is one of the remaining stones at Kampong Pande in Banda Aceh. Then an interesting stone from Pangaraya upriver in Banda Aceh, which actually has uh, an Islamic inscription on it, but no date. And um, again, stylistically, it's much more ornate than the simple forms found in, in Lamre. A stone which uh, came out of a beech ridge recently in Panchu was uncovered by the, the, the tides, um, which probably dates to the mid-15th century. Again, the buffalo horn type symbol is there, but you also get this uh, plaque or uh, a decorative device and uh, a dedicated inscription at the base. Um, this was a, of interest because 
Again, you get the same device on a mid 14th century grave marker uh, in the hinterland of Barus. And as far as I know, it's the only one of its type which uh, has been found in the Barus area. And of course, the links between Barus and Aceh um, are very close because, because of the camphor and the uh, benzoin, the incense which was exported from the, the Barus area. Um, other elements of this design also appear uh, in some of the Nissan around uh, Batuache. This, this chain, um, twisted chain type of thing is <coughs> an element that appears elsewhere. Uh, one example from Samudra, again extremely ornate, uh, which makes me think it's possibly later than the uh, most of the Lamre examples. And then uh, among the various types of grain markers at Lamre are plain pillar types which display multiple level upper parts and among smaller examples some which bear the inverted Tri Ratna symbol. Uh, here was one of our colleagues, uh, a local chap, who was helpful in, in finding and uncovering some of the grave markers there. Um, there's no uh, other decoration on the, this particular type other than the multiple tops, which I have not yet been able to relate to any other uh, Islamic grave marker from elsewhere. Um, a, a small group of them with the uh, buffalo type thing, in this case the other way up. Um, this is located near the Benteng Inon Bali on top of the cliff at Lok Chut. Um, another one from the top of the headland. Uh, another one with a plain example. And yet another with a, a decorative motif which is very similar in design to a dative, dated graves, grave marker at Passe, um, which bears a date of 840 Hijra or 1436. This same uh, rectangular design appears in uh, Passe. So there are some commonalities in design features between Passe and uh, Lamre, which is not surprising as there seems to have been quite a close relation, commercial relationship, political relationship between the two polities. Um, another example of a different form of grave marker with an incised um, floral design and a peculiar cap on the top of the stone. Uh, this one is unique. I, I've only ever seen one example of this particular type. And then penultimately, um, this may be, these, th this pair may be evidence for a Sufi presence uh, in Lamre. You have a, a pair of octagonal figures with a breast-like top and a base uh, with a carved honeycomb design around the bottom. Uh, and very similar stones have been uh, appeared in East Java at Trowulan and probably dated to the mid-late 15th century. Uh, Lamry's linkages in the early 15th century were, of course, um, with South China. Uh, the fleets under Cheng He visited Lam Lamry on several occasions during the numerous visits between 16, uh, 1405 and 1433. And interestingly, this was a period of calm between the two major tsunamis of 1394 and 1450. And the associated ceramics with these burials uh, suggest contemporary links with the Persian Gulf region, with South Asia, with Sri Lanka, Thailand, Ayutthaya, Vietnam, and of course, China. And historical sources affirm, affirm links with Pasai and Malacca. 
Uh, later ceramic finds also suggest links with Burma. Then we go back to just recap on the coincidences between the small slab Nisan and the text for the Sajara Malayu. Uh, the coincidental occurrence of the slab Nisan at these sites relates to the harbors mentioned in the text of the Sajara Malayu. And so there may be a, con a tangible connection between the legend and historical developments in the 13th century. Only, as I said earlier, Fanzo is missing from this list. But because Fanzo, if I'm right in identifying it with Panchu, is almost completely uh, underwater most of the time, and has also been subject to uh, several tsunami in the intervening centuries. So the possibility still exists that with ongoing research, uh, these early slab Nisan may yet be identified at Panchu. Uh, just to final point before I end, uh, I thought I'd mention this uh, back in 1964, uh, Professor Wang Gungu wrote an article on relations between China and Malacca, uh, 16, uh, 1403 to 1405, in a, a, a commemorative uh, volume edited by John Bastin and Rulvink, Malayan and Indonesian Studies Essays presented to Sir Richard Winstead on his 85th birthday. And on uh, page 94, Professor Wang Gungwu uh, makes reference to a Muslim Haji Mahamo Chini and others from the country of Siang Lani. Um, and he says, uh, they came to China from Siam with a Chinese mission, which was unusual. Then on page 95, he said, uh, note two, I am unable to identify Lani, although what little evidence we have points to the Malabar coast, where Calicut was dominated by Muslim merchants. So if my assessment of an Indian mercantile community established in Lamre is co correct, then Siang Lani is most probably Lani or Lamre. The Indian Muslims, in fact, were from the Anjuvanam community uh, in Aceh. This may be a bit uh, speculative, but the, the coincidences are such that um, speculation in this instance may be, I think, warranted. And that, I think, brings me to the end of this piece on Lamre. Thank you very much indeed for your patience. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Ed. I think now we can open the floor for questions.